the, is this so you can read like what you're drinking? <laughs> it's the Uncola. Let's well, see, they're designed to like, and then you flip it. Why? Because that's how Seven Up glasses were. Like they were shaped like this, and so this would have been the opening, and this would have been the bottom, and then. For their Uncola thing, they made their glasses upside down. Oh, okay, I see now. Yeah. It's an I, optical illusion. It's really stupid, but... <laughs> I think they're lovely. All right, so I'm here with David. We are going to do a tasting of several meads. I actually had a comment on a video the other day asking when the tasting for this was coming around. Um, and what so is this? This is a juniper session mead. So it's made in the style of a beer. It's made with a couple of different kinds of hops. There is a boil, and these juniper berries were actually harvested here in the Oklahoma City area. From, Stay local. Yeah, from real, real trees. So we are going to do a, a wine tasting scorecard uh, for these meads. And we're going to be tasting through four different meads, and we're going to uh, finish up with a tasting of Coquito. I plan on filming for a while, so apologies in advance for um, any antics that may happen during the course That's never of, happened. of gameplay Not here. Only drinking. So this first one, this is a Juniper Session Mead. So like I said, this was hopped, so it's gonna be kind of beery. It is carbonated, so it may or hopefully have a head on it. Do you have any questions about this product? Do I have any yeah. questions about this product? Well, I don't have a, like a live audience. It's fair. Well, who doesn't like pine trees? These juniper berries came from red cedar. So um, I used twice as much as you would typically use because red cedar is, sorry, you're gonna get a little juniper. That's fine. Juice in the bottom there. Red cedar is a less intense juniper berry than the common juniper. So I apologize for how. We, uh, we bottle condition this so that he's getting some um, yeasty beasties in the bottom. If you would like to try a, your first let's, sip let's, of my glass. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, go for it. So you'll, you'll want to pick up the, the appearance and the aroma is, is what we're looking for first. Here, I'll just trade with you. The appearance is very nice in this actually. So the appearance in this one is yeasty because I got the dregs from the bottom of the bottle. Um, it smells like juniper berries. It does. It's got a little bit of a gin-like aroma without the harshness of the alcohol. It's good. Yeah, the carbonation level is good. Mm -hmm. There's no head on it, which I'm a little disappointed about, which means the next time I should probably add something like um, additional maltodextrin or something to thicken it up. Uh, but um, it is sparkling, lightly. You can see in this glass a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some nice little fizzy bubbles. Mm -hmm. The yeast that we used for this was a champagne yeast, so that's why you get those small, tight arrangements of bubbles rather than the foaminess that you would get from like an ale or a lager yeast. I would say that the body on it is light. It's very light. It doesn't have a lot of legs to it. There's not a lot of sweetness. No, there's not. The, the back sweetening that was done to this was with xylitol, which is a sugar alcohol derived from corn cobs and hardwoods. Mine specifically was a hardwood xylitol. And so it's a natural sweetener, but it is non-fermentable. So the yeast can't consume it, which leaves a light sweetness. But for a five gallon batch, I used like a tablespoon. Oh, okay. Not liking this, this is pretty good. The juniper is really, it's there, but it's not overstated. No, this is, this is, it's good. good. It almost tastes like a cider. Yeah, it really does. It's, it's like a, it's a very light juniper cider. Yeah. I mean, it's got the, that, that. Man, I feel like quality. I killed my experience by drinking the fart juice over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great. This yeah. is, this is spectacular. Wait, this is very drinkable. I mean, that's very. Yeah, um, yeah the tartness, the, that kind of resinous 
cedar flavor. I mean, I think this is this is a, this is a pretty a pretty meaty. Yeah. I mean, I like the. I mean, we're still getting the results of the champagne mm -hmm. yeast. Um, I mean, it it looks like a pretty just a nice clean cider. That's what yeah. it looks like. So but I it's, think it's got that nice like, for lack of a better word, like evergreen right kind of note to it which I, i'm sure could be accomplished with a varietal of hops instead of using sure. the juniper berries but i kind of like the oklahoma flair of it yeah i do too no i think this is a great start to mm. something that could be really right. really phenomenal with just a few minor tweaks Okay, so next up on our list, this is a barley wine boche. Boche is a mead made from caramelized slash burnt honey. So this one had a large amount of honey that was put into a pot and cooked for about an hour, so it got very dark. Uh, this one was also made with toasted oats and toasted barley that were toasted in the oven. Okay. And then cold soaked in three or four gallons of water for four days. So the water basically picked up all of those toasted flavors and then we strained the grains out of it. All that was mixed together with a little bit of um, grape extract, like Welch's red grape extract. Uh, that was allowed to ferment, and then it was carbonated with grape juice extract, too. Things you're going to note about this are it is heavily carbonated, probably too much. Um, it's going to have a really nice head on it, and the color is, I think, perfect for a barley wine. Have you had barley wine before? No. Okay. So barley wine is a really, really heavy beer that's heavily, heavily um, uh, beefed up with barley. There's so much malt in it that it ends up tasting whiny on the other end because the alcohol content is so high. So that's where it gets the name barley wine. I'm Where's gonna, our alcohol content-ish on this one? Uh, about 10%. Okay. 10 to 11%. It is high. This is also hot, like a beer. So it um, has some of those hoppy um, vegetal esters in it from the oils and the hops. That smells really good. Yeah. Yeah, this one smells a lot beerier than, than the juniper did. I'm gonna give the appearance, I'm gonna give it a five. Yeah. Um, because I'm not gonna judge it for like I'm not gonna judge your uh, head over here. Um, yeah, I think I think appearance is spot on. Um, the color is good. The yeah, color is. I want it to be a little redder than it is, but I'm not upset with how that know, looks. It looks. I mean, it looks <clears throat> like a red ale. Right. Right. Yeah. You can pick. You get the hops. It smells like hops. It smells a little bit grapey. Yeah, a little bit. Mine's more carbonated than yours, so I'm I'm picking up some of the the burnt honey the kind smell. of notes. Yeah, I'll take mine. <clears throat> do you? Do oh yeah, it's, yeah. You can definitely. In the... When I really exhale, I guess as on this card that would be called the finish. Correct. Um, I I can pick up on a little bit of like a, a campfire marshmallow mm -hmm. kind of flavor, but you're right. It's kind of in the background. Which isn't necessarily bad, but we want it to have a little more of that. Right now, I think the flavor is pretty good. Yeah, no, and, and you know, for a product like this, I don't know that we necessarily need that heavy of a flavor. Right. Um, if you've seen our stout video, mm -hmm. we did all the honey was caramelized and we used dark um, liquid malt extract. Yeah. So I'm curious to see what the difference in that versus this product is, given that um, I think two thirds of the honey was caramelized in this. Okay. So I'm gonna no, go. I think the flavor is like right there. No, I, do too. I think it's perfect. I really like this. This this is a finisher to me. I'm not gonna dump this one. Oh no, yeah. You know what's so interesting about mead? 
typically is that it is a wine like product mm -hmm. so these first two that that we've we've tasted are definitely leaning into the beer like side of mead and i think it's interesting that you can with not a lot of hops honestly when you compare it to um, typical beer recipes and in this one all honey you can create a product that you could like you said you could almost mistake it for a coupe dnr and yeah and not really know the difference. So what we've opened up here is a traditional mead. It was, this one was step fed honey. So instead of putting all the honey in at once, I put it in over the course of several days. So the yeast was able to kind of come up to a tolerance with all the sugars and the alcohols. And so it kind of, it ferments slower than if I just dumped everything in and let the yeast go to town. Okay. It was also step fed some yeast nutrient so there was a little bit of, of added uh, diammonium phosphate is what I like to use. And it's, so that contributes no flavor or anything, but it helps the yeast kind of continue propagating and churn through. So this one is, is all honey. Everything in here is from honey. It is about 12% alcohol and it drinks like a white wine. Okay. Treat this one as you would a wine, not a beer. It, no carbonation. It pretty much looks like a white wine. It smells like straight up honey. <laughs> wow, yeah, it yeah. does. Now this fermented uh, almost dry. It, it finished off, I would say off dry. Some may call that semi-sweet. That is alcoholic honey, friends. <sighs> yeah. Which is kind of fantastic. Yeah, that is, that is, the most classic of classic meads, right there. Um, it's not cloyingly sweet. Chaucer's is, is one of the meads that most people try first, and that is, um, sorry to say, the reason a lot of people decide that they don't like mead. Um, it's pretty it, awful. Chaucer's just is, is literally, it's terrible. It's, yeah. it's, it's undrinkable. Um, so it's not that sweet. Um, this is very sweet, though. It is, it is perhaps not. sweeter than some would like. I mean, I probably couldn't sit down to a pint of this. That doesn't mean I think it tastes bad, but it's really sweet. If you if you had a pint of this, you would be on the floor. Well, maybe you wouldn't, but some folks would. <laughs> sure. Neither, neither <laughs> would. To be fair. We've been drinking a long time. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, it's 12% alcohol, so right. take that for what you will. Appearance is spot on. Appearance no. is what you would want yeah. out of a mead. That looks great. It's honey colored. I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying a pint. That's well, a little It'd be a lot. I wouldn't drink a pint of white wine either. I mean, <laughs> to be fair. Like, Depends on the night, but. Well, yeah. not traditionally. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe red wine. I've heard that called a mommy glass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. Not a mommy. So, <laughs> case in point, I suppose. Um, um, body, body, I'm, I'm iffy. I'm, I'm meh. I'm gonna I, go with a three. You know, that's what I, that's what I want with. I'm just okay. not a big fan of a traditional mead. Just a, a regular. Now, as far as traditional meads go, this is one of the best I've ever had. But I prefer beer products. I do too. More than I do. Right, like a wine product. So I'm, I'm meh on that. This isn't bad though. I mean, if, if you're into like the pure traditional mead, like this tastes good. Mead like a Viking. Yeah. Yep. This is what your D&D &D guys would want to be drinking right. on a Saturday night. Um, just not, it's not, it doesn't, it's I think it's phenomenal thing. for what it is, but it's, yeah, it's not my thing. But see, so how do we rate taste then? Because I gave it a three. I'm gonna give it a four. Okay. Because, like I said, I think it's a really good traditional mead. Okay. All right. What's next? Are you done with this? I mean, I feel like we should drink this. Yeah. I hate to waste it. Yeah. This is a citrus mead. Beginner home brewers might be familiar with what's called. Joe's Ancient Orange Mead, it's a okay. beginner mead recipe. So it's intended for people who are just starting, they want something simple and predictable. Uh, this is a, a riff on Joe's Ancient Orange Mead. Some things I did differently is he recommends a pretty heavy mulling. So okay. there's cinnamon and clove and I think nutmeg. 
which I I don't know if it's the cilantro. Um, yeah, you don't like cilantro. Thing in me, but right. when I taste fermented spices, they taste like plastic, mm -hmm. and so I don't ferment spices. Um, I just I've I've rarely had a good experience with it. I would rather spice it. Like if I'm gonna do a hot mold mead, I'd rather spice it on the stove after it's brewed than do it in the carboy. And so I did not include any of the spices. Joe's recipe also includes basically dumping a whole uh, couple of oranges in there. And instead of doing that, I zested the oranges and juiced them, but I didn't put the pith in. Okay. So trying to avoid some of the bitter elements that you would get sure. with orange pith. Because from what I've read, a lot of people think that it tastes bitter for the first like six to eight months. And then eventually that ages out. I didn't want to wait. Well, you're almost long. essentially creating bitters. Yeah, I in mean, a, yeah. In a way, I mean, it's basically what you just you're described using, is... You're using alcohol to draw bitters. out the bitter flavors of the pit. It does look dark in this green bottle. I mean, it looks like a red wine in the green bottle. I'm gonna shout out to Austin Homebrew Supply where I bought these bottles. These were really stinking cheap and they were very, very helpful in there. So, um, you'll notice that this is very purple. It, the pea blossoms, I will say, added some floral character to it also. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. Um, but most of your flavor in here is gonna come from the orange juice and the honey. And now another caveat I will add is that some people, I may be one of them, believe that orange juice when fermented ends up kind of tasting like orange juice after you've brushed your teeth. Is that what we're gonna have here? Well, we'll see if you pick up on any of those, fantastic. those notes. That's fantastic. So I'll serve you first. Okay. So you will notice. Wow, that is not like wine at all. That is just purple drink. Quite. That's what that is. <laughs> you know, I've been drinking a lot of NyQuil lately. Yeah, I, I might could. I might forgo that tonight. I've got a little bit of a cold. Not just recreationally. <laughs> so yeah, hold that up to the light. That is purple. So appearance, where, where are you at on our appearance scale? I mean, it's weird. <laughs> um, Reddit was real into this for a while. Was there a good reason or a Reddit reason? Uh, there was a guy who posted, it's like one of the top posts now, I posted a picture of a mead that he had colored with pea blossoms and then it just took off. Because everybody wanted this. And they're cheap. You get them from uh, Thailand. Okay. Uh, they cost like $3 shipped to get enough for a five gallon batch. And so why not, right? What color would it be if you did not put it? It would look like that other one. It would be golden. Yeah. I'm going to go with golden <laughs> is better. I mean, it's, it's just weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this kind of reminds me of like like a weird wine cooler or like you know some weird colored flavored garbage at a liquor store <laughs> that like isn't a pocket shot. No, no, it's like like those um, those blackberry wines they have that are like oh. high fructose corn syrup, back yeah. sweetened. And well, now that you mentioned grape drink, like, I can't help but smell <laughs> like um, I don't think it's Welch's, but those. Those like canned purple sodas, the grape sodas. Like Fanta? Yeah, yeah, like a grape Fanta. Yeah, it looks like a grape Fanta. It kind of smells like that, but it's flat. Oh, it does now. Okay. Uh, All right, give it a taste, give it a taste. Yeah. We'll, we'll rate our appearances separately. <clears throat> nope. <laughs> It tastes like toothpaste, or like orange juice after toothpaste. Yeah, the aroma's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> this is one that I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this in the basement for a long time. Yeah. And I'm gonna imagine that five, six years from now, I'm gonna rediscover this and it's gonna be just... The Germans have a celebratory, like, wine, if you will. Is it mold? Yes. Is it's it a mulled wine. Glühwein? Yes. Okay. This is like a not so gross glühwein. <laughs> and it doesn't even have the spices in it. Right. Like imagine this with like star anise. No, I, I, like I've that. had glühwein. Like, mm -hmm. 
this might be better warm. It might be. It might be. And maybe, maybe while it's still cold one night, we'll pour some in the Dutch oven and throw a cinnamon stick in there. Yeah, I mean, I can see that, but yeah. this one got a pretty low score for me. It's real bad. So like I said, I'm probably not going to touch this again for a long time. And then we'll do another tasting here in a few years. <laughs> and see if it's How many improved. bottles did you say you had? Uh, I, so I bottled half a batch, and I think we've had two or three bottles. So there's still probably six or seven bottles down there. Um, there's no harm in waiting it out. We're back here with Camila. Hi. Camila is from Colombia, and we're going to be tasting Coquito. So I'm going to let Camila lead this conversation because my recipe is non-traditional. It doesn't use any canned ingredients. It uses fresh milk. Well, I'm lying. It does use canned ingredients. It doesn't use canned milk. That's that's like the big this one. like that. Canned milk is the most offensive thing that I've ever tasted in, in my short 34 years. Okay, wow. <laughs> and so I wanted to make mine with fresh milk. So it does use canned coconut milk and coconut cream. Coquito is actually a Puerto Rican drink. I'm not Puerto Rican, but I've had Coquito before. So it's kind of like the Puerto Rican eggnog. Is that good? Yeah. Uh, it's made with vanilla, Puerto Rican rum, uh, condensed milk, crucial ingredient. BC didn't use it, so we'll see how it tastes. And um, that's coconut and milk and what else? Egg Water, yolks. I guess. I don't know. So we'll see how it tastes. Egg yolks are an important component. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Sorry, I forgot that. Ooh, look at the consistency. Good. How do you feel? <laughs> how do you feel about the consistency? Um, no, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Is it on point? It is on point. Doing great. Ten out of ten. It's good. It's liquid, but. You know, it's, it's, it's I'm liquid. glad it's liquid. <laughs> but it, it looks great. It smells good to you. So appearance one, Bubbly. one to five. Ooh. I'm gonna um, go four. I was gonna say three and a half. But okay, we can do that. Hey, no, you're doing okay, great. Hold on, hold on. Is it your but first time? Good. It's not there yet. It's, and what, it's what would you say little. would make up that last one point five? A little bit more dense. Okay. Just this I'm tiny feeling bit. a little bit more dense. <laughs> just, just, just a little. Okay, so but it, needs, it looks it needs great to though. Be For it to your first time, it looks great. Great. It That's looks great. Said. How's the aroma? It smells great. It has that tropical smell. You can smell the rum for mm -hmm. sure. So I will give it a 4.5. Let's let's, uh, let's do take it, a do sip. Do we taste it? Yeah. Ooh, exciting. Okay. Mm. Do we need to crack this open? <laughs> do, do I need a I definitely think it's missing the condensed milk, but it's because I'm so used to drinking it with the condensed milk, but it still tastes very good. Okay. It's very good. Is this Enjoy the type it. of thing that you would add your coconut, since you brought your travel size <laughs> with you? Yes. You, so you would, I would crack that yeah. open? Just like two or three drops, just to make it a little bit more sweeter, you know? Like. Interesting. So thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.